This is International Math Olympiad 2015, problem 3. We see triangle ABC, orta center H, altitude AF, and we see two other altitudes, BF1 and CF2 as well. We also see the midpoint M of the side BC, leveled with circumcenter O of triangle ABC, and we see the right angle HQA and another right angle HKQ. And we see the five points A, B, C, K and Q in this order, which all lie on the circumcircle of triangle ABC. It's not too hard to prove that segments HQ and HM lie on one straight line. Let's draw a diameter of the circumcircle of triangle ABC through its vertex A and let A prime be the other end of that diameter. And let's connect two other vertices B and C with point A prime. Then it's easy to see that the quadrilateral BA prime CH is a parallelogram because BF1 and CF2 are two altitudes of triangle ABC and angles ABA prime and ACA prime are right angles that are subtended by the diameter AA prime. From this it follows that point M, which is the midpoint of segment BC, is point of intersection of two diagonals of this parallelogram. And so three points HM and A prime are collinear. Also HQA is the right angle by definition of point Q and A prime QA is the right angle because it's subtended by the diameter A A prime. From this it follows that QH and QA prime lie on one straight line. So all four points Q, H, M and A prime are collinear. It appears that the main theme in this problem is the so-called nine-point circle. Uh, the other name of it is Euler's circle. It is well known and proven in geometry that for each triangle there are nine significant points in this triangle that lie on this circle. These nine points are the midpoint of each side of the triangle, such as point M on this diagram, the foot of each altitude, such as point F on the diagram, and the midpoint of the line segment from each vertex of the triangle to the orta center of the triangle. We have such point on this diagram, its midpoint G of segment AH, that is the circumcenter of the right triangle HQA. This last point is an example of a more general fundamental property of a nine-point circle. It's that each point that lines on a nine-point circle is the midpoint of a straight line segment that connects the orthocenter H of triangle ABC with some point on the circumcircle of triangle ABC. Another example that illustrates this property is point I the midpoint of line segment HQ, which is the circumcenter of the right triangle HKQ. By the nine-point circle theorem, point I also lies on the nine-point circle of triangle ABC. And analogously, the midpoint of line segment HK also lies on the same nine-point circle of triangle ABC. Let's denote this point by letter L. The scientific term of this property is that orthocenter H is the center of homothety for the circumcircle of triangle ABC and its nine-point circle with the ratio of homothety 2 to 1. Thanks to this nice property, we can focus our analysis on the points that lie on and inside the nine-point circle of triangle ABC and forget about points A, B, C, K and Q. We'll come back to them later. So we know that points M, F, 
L-I-N-G, all lie on the nine-point circle of triangle ABC. Let's draw one more point on this circle, point I prime, which is the opposite side of the diameter of this circle drawn from point I. Also, let's prolong two chords of this circle, IL and MF, until point N where they meet. We want to prove that line segment NH is perpendicular to chord IM. If we manage to prove it, this hypothesis will become the key discovery in the solution of this problem. We didn't mention so far that chord GM is the diameter of the circle. It's true since three points GM and F lie on this circle, and F is the foot of the altitude of triangle ABC. Let's concentrate on the triangle INM. Let's call its two internal angles, IMN and MIN, alpha and beta. And let's call the lengths of segments HM and HI x and y, respectively. Assume that small letter a denotes the length of the altitude of triangle I and M dropped from vertex N onto the base IM, and that the distances of the foot of that altitude from points M and I are x plus delta and y minus delta, respectively, where delta is positive, negative, or zero. Then tangent alpha is a over x plus delta, and tangent beta equals a divided by y minus delta, so that the ratio of tangent alpha to tangent beta equals y minus delta over x plus delta. It's obvious that this ratio is equal to y over x if and only if line segment nh is that altitude so that NH is perpendicular to IM. Let's prove this equality. On this diagram, we can see that angle alpha in triangle INM is subtended by the arc IF of this circle, and angle IGF, marked by green color, is also subtended by the same arc, so its measurement is also alpha. Also, angle beta in triangle INM is subtended by arc LM of this circle, and angle LI'M, marked by blue color, is subtended by the same arc, so its measurement is beta. We can also easily see that quadrilateral GI'MI is the rectangle, because its two diagonals are diameters so that its two opposite sides, GI and I'M, have the same length, which we denote with small letter D. Then we can write tangent alpha equals Y over D, and tangent beta is X over D, from which it follows that tangent alpha divided by tangent beta equals Y over X, which proves that straight line segment NH is perpendicular to segment IM. Let's get back to this diagram and consider two right triangles, ILH and HFM. IH and HM are diameters of the circumcircles of these two triangles, and since they lie on the same straight line, point H is the point of tangency between these two circumcircles. And since segment NH is perpendicular to line IM, then NH is tangent to both circumcircles. And therefore, we can write the formulas of the power of a point. NH squared equals NF times NM, and it's also equal to NL times NI. Now we finally get back to our original diagram, which shows points A, B, C, K, and Q. Since point L is the midpoint of segment HK, then straight line ILN is the perpendicular bisector of segment HK, from which it follows 
that segments NH and NK are congruent. So we can rewrite our power of a point equalities with NK squared instead of NH squared. From this, it immediately follows that segment NK is tangent to the circumcircle of triangle FKM. We can also rewrite the second power of a point equality with NK squared, which equals NL times NI. And consider triangle ILK. This is the right triangle because segment IL is the midline of triangle HKQ, which is the right triangle by definition of point K. And so segment NK is tangent to the circumcircle of the right triangle ILK with the center at midpoint P of segment IK. Therefore, segment NK is perpendicular to the radius PK and also perpendicular to IK, which is the radius of the circumcircle of triangle HKQ. So straight line NK is tangent to both circumcircles of triangles MFK and HKQ which proves that these two circumcircles are tangent at point K. We're done.